Today I'm checking out the Ishin X220 Wizard. Now, there's been a lot of requests for this one in the comments section, so I tried a few times to get a sample in for review off one of the retailers, but I guess it has already had a lot of exposure and I couldn't get one in. So, in the end, I took the plunge and bought one myself. Now, before buying one, I did have my reservations about this one. On face value, it looks impossibly cheap for for what you get, which is a fully fledged racing quadcopter ready to go out of the box. But in reality, quite a lot of the gear is missing to get it going. Now, that's fine if you already have the rest of the gear, but if you don't, there is quite a lot to add. So, I paid £119 for this one, and you get a very nice 220 sized carbon fiber X frame. And we have 2205 2300 kV motors. Again, they are very nice motors. Then there's the ESCs, which are 20 amp and flashed with BL Heli S. So these will be a good pairing with the motors. The ESCs are also held in with some cable ties, which is my preferred method. You are given a huge amount of props. They are King Kong 5040 three leaf props, and you are given 10 sets in total. Then under the hood, we have an SP Racing F3 flight controller, which is pre flashed already with Beta Flight. Tick. We also have a 200 milliwatt VTX with 48 selectable channels via dip switches. And up front is a 700 TV line CMOS FPV camera disguised as a HS1177 CCD camera. I have also added a GoPro Session 5 with a case from PRCJ. Now, I have done a separate video on these mounts in the past. They are very good. I will link them in the description. There is a nice gap in the frame to run a cable tie or Velcro strap underneath for any kind of mount and camera, which is nice. You are also given a nice battery strap, which fits through the top. I have rooted mine slightly further back to make room for the camera mount and the receiver's antenna. There are some sundries left in the package after all of that. We have some foam landing feet, some spare cable ties, a spanner for adding or removing the propellers, a dipole antenna for the VTX, which is RPSMA, as well as the locking nuts for the props, which I have already attached. Now, that is a lot of stuff, but in order to get it flying, you are also going to need a radio and receiver. So I'm using the Flysky i6X here, which comes with the X6B receiver, and that costs around £45. I have made a previous video on the i6X and how to connect it to the wizard, so I will link that in the below. You can go cheaper than that and get a normal i6, which is around £35, and they also sell a almost ready-to-fly version with a radio and also a receiver as well, but this is just the ARF version that I've got here. You will also need a battery and a charger. I'm using a Turnigy Graphene 1300 milliamp 4 cell LiPo here, but you can go cheaper and get the 1300 milliamp Infinity batteries, which cost around £18. For the charger, I use the B6 AC V2. You can go cheap on the charger if you want, but you will suffer with charge times. The Charsoon 2-4S charger costs just £10, but it charges via the balance port and probably only at 0.8 amps. Then you will need some FPV goggles. I'm using the Fatshark Dominator V2 goggles with a diversity receiver and dual antennas. But to go cheap, you can get the Fury B VR1 visor set as well as a two cell battery and then you are pretty much ready to go. Now, some time ago on the channel, I made a cheap quadcopter build, and the response that I got mostly was, you call that cheap? And the reality is that a full FPV setup is still expensive, even when you go cheap. All of those components I just listed come to a total of £230, or around $279, or €264. Euros. 
and at that level my cheap build came to £231 which is just £1 more except my custom build has 30 APS-C's, a CCD camera with a built-in on-screen display showing battery voltage and powerful 2600 kV motors. So actually when you add it all up the Wizard is no better or cheaper component wise than a cheap custom build but and this is a big but. The wizard comes ready built and this makes a big difference to a lot of people. You see, if I was to build a quad like the wizard it would take me around 4 hours rushing it and maybe 6 hours taking my time. My time is expensive and I'm going to charge myself £50 an hour to build my quad because car mechanics charge that much so why not me? So 4 hours at £50 an hour is £200 of my time. Of course in reality if time costs you nothing then I would always advise you to build your own. Why? Well I get asked a lot of questions around RTF quadcopters such as how do I replace an ESC or a motor? Or, the video is showing blank after a crash, what do I do? And the answer is, you don't know because you didn't build it yourself and most of the time I find myself reverse engineering the quad when there's an issue. In fact, I have had an issue myself with the wizard which I will talk about a bit later. So there are some things I felt needed adding to this package in order for it to fly up to my personal standards. You can see I have added a Omway antenna here. This one is RPSMA. It seems like the cheap component world is trying to do away with SMA which is a pain because the immersion stuff is SMA but there you go. I found that the stock dipole antenna breaks up too much while flying so I added the Omway Cloverleaf antenna. Again, you can use the stock one that it comes with, this is just my personal preference. I also added two cable ties and heat shrink to my antennas. I wish I had positioned them slightly further back as the battery gets in the way but it just about does the job. The frame is really sturdy and there's no movement in the arms at all. I do like these side plates that cover up all of the electronics but they are a little loose and can move around. The motor protectors are really nice and the carbon has a purple tint to the edges which is a really nice touch. The flight controller comes set up for PPM with a servo lead sticking out of the top. I switch this over to the IO2 port on the SP Racing board so that I can use the FlySky iBus setup. Again, I detail that in my i6X video. For me personally, I took the top off using a hex driver and mounted the receiver on some standoffs inside the quad as I thought it looked neater. Now there's no way to know with this quad when your battery is about to give up because there's no on-screen display or voltage buzzer. So I have added this external voltage buzzer and checker to the balance port of the battery and that tucks in nicely in the battery strap. I have set the alarm to go off at 3.5 volts per cell. If you are new to this then you might not know that LiPos can't go below 3 volts per cell otherwise they may never recover from that and it will be heading for the bin. Now I have made a couple of changes in Betaflight so let's go and check those out. In the ports tab I have turned on the Serial RX on the UART3 for my iBus receiver. In the configuration tab I have turned the motor stop off so that the motors spin when the quadcopter is armed. I find this better for flying acro as the throttle never cuts out. Everything else is stock here. You can see that the board is orientated at minus 90 degrees and that is so the USB port can be on the side of the quadcopter and that is something important to note if you want to reflash it with a newer firmware. I have enabled Serial RX and iBus in the receiver options and everything else here is the same after that. The failsafe is set to drop out of the box which is good 
and then onto the PID tab. These are the stock PIDs. They don't seem to be the default Betaflight PIDs, but they aren't far off from them. The D looks to be a little low to carry a camera. It is probably tuned not to carry a HD camera, so I will have to check that out later in the flight. The stock rate was set to 0.7. I have boosted that up to 0.8. That is just my personal preference. I have also removed the point one of Expo that was also dialed in. And again, that is just my personal preference. And then everything else is stuck. For the receiver tab, I have just set the channel map to AETR for FlySky. You need to plug the quadcopter's battery in in order to power up the receiver, so make sure that you do so with the props off. Under the modes tab, only angle mode was set up, so I have added arming on a two position switch and angle horizon and acro on a three position switch. I didn't calibrate the ESCs as it was already done nicely out of the box. And lastly, I'll go into the CLI and type in version. This one actually came with version 3.01 of Beta Flight for the SP Racing F3, which is currently the latest one, which is nice. The website advises that it's shipping with version 2.91, so clearly they are keeping this one updated, which is nice. So that's all of my settings, let's go and take it for a fly. Okay, let's go for a takeoff with this one. I've got my arming switch here, so very low RPM with BL Halley S. So let's throttle up and see what happens. Seems pretty uneventful. Really liking the LEDs underneath. Showing up quite well on this very gloomy day. That's quite a windy day here today. But it just cuts through it no problem. Go for a punch. It should be pretty insane. That wasn't even full throttle. <laughs> I don't think I dare to do full throttle. Try again. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, I could only do full throttle for a little bit because <laughs> it's crazy. See if I can reach the acro button. There we go. So in acro now. Just having a look what the tune is like. So this is the stock tune. And it seems all right, you know. Obviously I won't know until I do some FPV with it as always, but yeah. Seems like it's flying nice, this one. Oh, the wind is blowing me about. Okay, let's come in for a landing and see if I can do some FPV. So on the first FPV flight, I had an issue. Let's see if you can spot it. Now, the video was cutting out for an amount of time that my anxiety didn't like to deal with. Anyways, I got through it and persevered, so I thought I will try a couple of more rolls and see if I could replicate the issue, and it didn't happen, so I thought maybe it's a one-off. So I did another punch out, a left roll and then a right, and again the video cut out for a amount of time that just sent my heart into a flutter, which isn't pleasant at all. Anyways, I thought what could be causing that, and I did another right roll and again it cut out and somehow I didn't crash, I don't know how that was the case, but anyways, I've learnt that when this sort of thing happens, just keep flying and hope that the video comes back and that did happen. Now initially I thought maybe it's a voltage sag, so maybe I'm doing a punch on the throttle and the voltage is getting too low and the VTX is cutting out, that is usually something that causes that. But then I thought this is an RTF and I've not seen it happen before in any of the other reviews and I started to notice a pattern that it only happened when I was doing rolls to the right, so I thought well actually that has to be a mechanical thing. So. I came in for a landing and looked around the quadcopter to see if I could see any wires loose or anything like that 
and there wasn't any wires loose however I noticed that the antenna was dangling around and when I went to touch it I took the antenna off and the entire SMA housing came off with it leaving just the pin behind so it seems like I have got a VTX that is a dud so what I did was I forced the antenna back in and it sort of stays there but actually after a couple of flights it vibrates out again so the VTX is pretty much spent which is disappointing but anyway I did get it back in the air and was able to fly it for long enough to check that that was the issue and in the next flight it wasn't cutting out anymore so that was the issue but it does look like I'm gonna have to switch out the VTX for this one which is a disappointment I am probably gonna switch out with the Foxy Switcher which is the best VTX that I have come across so far so I'm probably gonna have to stick that in but then I noticed that I didn't have a very good tune on the quadcopter and I think that's because I added the HD camera but I was doing some various different tricks and rolls and I could see that I was getting a wobble on the roll axis so I then landed again and went into beta flight and the only thing that I did was I bumped up the D value to 50 for both the pitch and also the roll axis and that seemed to give me the perfect tune so then I went and did a proper flight with everything that I was happy with so here is that flight and it's going pretty dark now because I have spent all day trying to get this thing work so if I am to rate the Ishin X220 Wizard I would say it's a 7 out of 10 I'm pretty disappointed with the way that that VTX broke I mean it, you know it didn't have any crashes or anything like that it was just faulty out of the box and I think people might be saying well that's a little bit harsh but I think that if you got one of these Ishim Wizards and didn't have the VTX brake then you would probably be a lot more fond of it but I'm gonna have to switch this one out and since the RPSMA adapter fully came out of the pin the reception was never as good as before okay it was cutting out completely but I wasn't getting lines across the screen like I am now now it's not cutting out and it's definitely flyable but I think that was a bit of a shame for me so that's why I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 if the VTX had have worked better I'd probably given it an 8 or 9 but another reason to not rate it so highly for me is the fact that we don't have any on-screen display or voltage telemetry just a buzzer would have been nice of course that's easily fixable with a external buzzer or you could probably fit a buzzer yourself to the SP Racing F3 now as for the video quality I was actually quite surprised because this is a CMOS camera and I couldn't tell the difference between this and my HS1177 camera now the view wasn't crazy wide but it didn't take me a lot of time to get used to usually I'm using 2.5 millimeter lenses and this one is a little bit narrower than that but it wasn't a problem now one thing that was a problem is the GoPro was struggling in this low light. Now it wasn't really close to dusk but it was a very dreary day and I find that when in low light conditions the GoPro seems to lose its 60 frames per second ability and it sort of goes a bit juddery and sort of reduces itself at times to 30 frames per second so apologies for that. But other than that after all of that messing about with the VTX trying to figure out what the issue was I was having fun with it and importantly the tune was really good so all you have to do there is bump up the D value to 5 or 50 should I say and then I was getting no more wobbles on the roll and also the pitch axis so that was good flight time was good as well I think it was about a four and a half minute flight time and one thing that was really good is using the Turnergy graphene battery with this and also that external beeper. The beeper only came in right at the last minute so it didn't sort of go off while I was hitting the top end of the throttle and 
I knew when it was time to land, so that was really good about this setup as well. But for me personally, I'm gonna have to stick in another VTX because I can't have that SMA adapter coming apart in the air. But other than that, yeah, pretty good quadcopter. So there you go, that's my review of the Ishin X220 Wizard. I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one, as well as the other things that I used in this video. So as I come in for a landing, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.